today I'm going to share with you how to make a regular cityscape phone shot look premium and expensive. Well, can I share with you a secret? When I just cannot match the colors of a composite, I convert it to black and white and call it fancy. Well, that's a good way to hide it. Similarly, when I just cannot get the colors to look right, I again convert it to black and white and call it an art. See, these are the tips that most photographers won't tell you about. That's what we're gonna do today with some dodging and burning, a little compositing and a very special blue filter effect. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the brilliant world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description but I would highly recommend that you use your own phone photos. So this is uh, one of the very simple photos that I was hurrying to give a presentation at Adobe Max and I was walking on the streets of Los Angeles. I didn't have my heavy camera so I took my basic phone OnePlus 5T and I just snapped this photo. If you look at it closely, it's an okay shot. We can work with this but not as good as a camera, right? If we zoom in, have a look at this. First of all, it is a JPEG. I know you can capture raw with it, but again, I just snapped it, right? So this is not as good. The resolution is not that high. It's going to be kind of okay, but we can make this look fancy. And here's how to do it. First of all, with the layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. Now, these might not be the exact steps that you follow with your image because every image is different. You just have to be a little creative, but this will give you an idea of what you can do with Photoshop in this case. Now with this copy, let's name this black and white. Now we're going to apply the camera raw filter to it. Now before applying camera raw filter, what do we do? We convert this to a smart object so that we can change the values of camera raw later. So with the black and white layer selected, let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Now let's apply camera raw filter to it. Let's go to filter and then camera raw filter. Now to make it fancy, we want to make the skies black. Now what color is the sky? Blue, right? So let's go to the black and white mix but it doesn't show black and white mix why because it's not a black and white image let's change the profile first from color to monochrome now as soon as you change that to monochrome instead of hsl adjustments you will now begin to see black and white mix so let's go there and just decrease the blues all the way to the left now have a look these areas just don't look right the sky is black but you know there are problems with couple areas we will fix that later. Don't worry about that. Let's come back to the basic adjustments by clicking on this icon right there. And you can always play with these sliders right here. I'm going to just increase the contrast. Uh, I remember if you have followed Rick Salmon, he's a great photographer and an author. So he told me once that if you just go back to your black and white images and just increase the contrast, it's going to add much more spice to it and make them and give them a brand new look. So let's keep the contrast high and keep the shadows high. And let's increase the clarity just a little bit. We don't want to introduce so much halos. So 20 is fine, probably less highlights. Just a touch. Now we can always change these settings later. Hit OK. Now this is all right. However, have a look at this area. There's a lot of blues that we try to make it black. But then again, this area just doesn't look right. We need to bring the blues back. How do we do that? For the black and white layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of this. And we can name this Bring Blues Back blues back all right now this is again the advantage of converting this into a smart object you can always go back to this and just bring the blues back so double click on the camera raw filter this will take you back to the camera raw filter yeah it's loading <laughs> now let's go back to the black and white mix and bring the blues back back to normal just double click on it to bring it back to normal hit ok but we only wanted to bring the blues back in certain areas, not all over the place. Now, this is where the magic of dodging and burning starts. Now, dodging and burning is usually brightening and darkening. But in this case, as soon as we brought the blues back, it brightened the overall image. We can actually use this as an advantage to brighten some windows and add some dimension in these buildings. So let's create a negative mask. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the mask button. This creates a negative mask, a black mask, which means everything is hidden. Only on the areas where we paint white, those areas are going to show up. So with the brush selected, of course, we can take a huge brush like this and dab with white. With white as the foreground color, you can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and click. See that? See that shade right there? Isn't that amazing? So we will do this in a different way. So first of all, let's make a selection of this side of the building and then we will dab. It will bring more dimension to it. So with the polygonal lasso tool selected, the second one right there. We can easily make a selection. That's not hard. It's just straight edges. So I'm going to make a point right there. Let's zoom out and make a point at the top right there. Now I'm going pretty quick. You can take all the time in the world. 
to make the selections faster. We're just making a selection of this side of the wall. I messed up somewhere, I know. Let's go back and see where I messed up. Oh, this is okay. There's a little bit of bend, right? Oh, that's where I messed up. I bent it. I made a click right there. You can always go back in the polygonal lasso tool by pressing the backspace key. All right, you're back. One more time, you're back again. So now let's just take it down right here. Make a point and let's complete it. Okay, now that we have a selection, what we can do, we can take the brush back again and make it larger and just dab with white. This will only paint on this area. See that shine right there we just created? You don't have to overthink it. It's amazing. Press Ctrl or Command D. Done. Amazing. Now let us do the same for this area as well. So with the polygonal lasso tool, select it one more time. And this time I'm going to do it really fast. Let's click on that. Make a selection right there. Right, Just a basic selection right here. Now with the brush selected white as the foreground color and this is what I meant to do when we talked about the blue filter. With a large enough brush, let's just dab right there. Look at that. So if you want to add more shine, you can just go forward and do that. Probably this area, just a little more shine, a little more shine right here as well. It's great. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. Now have a look just at that building. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So you can take your time to do this all over the area. I'm going to speed it up so that it doesn't become monotonous for you. Now, once we've brought the blues back, we have to add some punch to the image. Let's make the highlights even more brighter. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Always my favorite. Now click a point in the middle and just take it up. Probably let's take the highlights up. Wow, that is looking fantastic. Now we need to make sure that we are not overdoing it, that we are not losing the details. And a great way to make sure that happens is take it all the way up just like this. Now just keep it in the highlight areas by double clicking on the right side of the layer. This will open up the layer styles dialog box. Now we need to take these highlights away from the dark areas. So take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. This takes the curves effect away from the dark areas of the underlying layer from the current layer. This looks okay, now it's very harsh. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and increase the transition all the way to the right side. This is fantastic, now we can control it accordingly i guess this is a good place so let's have a look at the before and after here's the before here's the after look at the shine now it's time for us to clear up stuff have a look at this building peeking through from the corner we need to clear that up probably if you want to just remove these street lights you can do that too so let's create a brand new layer at the top and first of all let's take the brush just black as the color just take a sample you don't have to it's completely black anyway and just paint over it well that is covered now you can just uh, make sure that the sky is completely black and paint over that. Now, you, to cover this area, you can easily choose the clone stamp tool or the healing tool and easily do that. So I'm just going to show one of these. You can just take your time to remove all the rest of the areas. So I'm just going to click on hold and choose the healing brush tool. And now let's take a sample from here by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click on it to take a sample and just make sure it's aligned properly right in here and paint over it. Gone. Right? All right, let's take care of this area. Let's take a sample one more time from this area. Make sure that it aligns properly and paint that area away. All right, now I didn't do it properly, but you get the idea. We have, if you zoom out, you just cannot tell. You can do the same for this area as well. You can also use the content aware fill and try if it works. Now, once you have cleaned that up, do not forget organization is important. Double click on the text of the layer and let's name it cleaning. There we are. Now comes the exciting part, and that is dodging and burning. Again, we're gonna use the curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves again. And for dodging, we take it up. Keep in mind, dodging means brightening and burning means darkening. So click a point in the middle and just take it up, just like this. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Now take the brush and just dab in certain areas. You can also use the old technique that we used before by making selections and then dabbing. So here, I want to add some highlights, some more just punch highlights. 
just like this. Yeah. What if we try to dab right in here? Yeah, that's a nice one too. So let's create one from there. That's an interesting one. Now, what if you want to make this area brighter? Simple. First of all, let's make a selection. So with the polygonal lasso tool selected, we're going to just click. Now I'm doing it quickly, very quickly. And with that, also make sure that you select the other side as well if you want to just add the same side. So hold the shift key and then let's add this side as well. All right, now both of these sides have been selected. Now take the brush, white as the foreground color, you can actually paint from the top. See, see that highlight that we are creating from the top here as well. Once you're happy with this, just press Control or Command D. Look at that what we did over there. Now we left out a couple of area that was our mistake. So let's go back before highlighting it. And let's correct this selection right there. So with the polygonal lasso tool selected, we can hold the shift key and then click on this point and then add this area and just make sure all of these areas are added. All right, now let's try the same zoom out with the brush selected, just dab from the top. That looks nice. Let's tap from here as well. Once you're satisfied, press Control or Command D. Look at that dodging that we did over there. Now, since we have brightened this area, let's say the light was reflecting off of this area and onto this building, we can try that effect too. So with the polygonal lasso tool again selected, we're gonna make a selection of that building. All right, now let's take the brush and just bump in that area. That's nice. Press Control or Command D to deselect that. That's a nice highlight right there. Now let's go ahead and add some more highlights to the windows and a little more. There we are. Now that we are done with dodging, how can we forget the organization? Let's double click on the text and let's name this dodging. If you want to do burning, you can go forward with that. But in this case, I don't think we need to darken anything. Now coming to the coolest part of this tutorial, and that is sky replacement. That's going to make the world of difference. Now let's bring in the new sky. So here we are in our finder and we have the sky. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it into Photoshop just above the image on the canvas. All right, let's make it bigger. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and drag it to make it big from the center. This is fine. All right. Now I want this only in the sky area. How do we do that? First of all, let's turn it off for a second. Now, with the help of the quick selection tool, make sure sample all layers is checked. Just sample the sky. Easy, it was black, so it was easy to do. Also, it has select some extra areas, so hold the Alt key or the Option key and just subtract this area. All right. So let's subtract this area properly. It's gonna be okay. All right, let's zoom out. Now, let's turn on the sky and then click on the mask button. Now the sky is all blue. How is this possible? It's all black and white uh, image and the sky is all blue. It doesn't look right. So let's convert that to black and white as well. So click on the adjustment layer icon and choose black and white. Now we only want to apply this to the sky. So click on this button, which is create clipping mask button. Now blue is black. So let's go down to the blues and drag it all the way to the left hand side. This is going to make it look fantastic. However, it's also making it look pixelated. Why? because this is a JPEG image. It, it doesn't have much details. But anyway, we, are, we will try to create again to hide our mistakes. We will again try to convert it to a long exposure. And when you have when you capture long exposures, you have seen that the sky moves, right? And as it moves, the clouds blur out. So similarly, we can apply some blur to it, right? So with the sky still selected, we can go to filter, blur gallery, and then path blur. It's one of my favorites. So you can set a direction in which you want the clouds to move. So this is a good direction. You can increase the speed right there. And you can also just curve it if you wanted to. So if you wanted the clouds to curve in a certain direction, move in a certain direction, you can do that too. So let's say this is the direction you wanted the clouds to move. You can do that. You can do crazy movements here. See, you can control the speed from here. If you wanted to, I'm going to set a very high speed. This is OK. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Now I'm going to go back to black and white and bring some details back. Let's go back to blues and bring some details back over there. 
and there you have it isn't that fantastic also what you can do you can add some noise on top of it that's totally upon you add some filters but that's how you can make a phone shot a simple mediocre phone shot let's take a look at the before and after simple phone shot the colors are not kind of okay the light is not that amazing but again if you just add some photoshop magic to it this my friend is what you can achieve time for a quick little recap all you have to do is first make a copy of the background layer once you have made a copy convert it into a smart object why so that you can change the values of the camera raw filter later now convert it to black and white and then take the blues all the way to the left hand side so that it's absolutely black now make another copy and here we need to bring the blues back again go back to the camera raw filter by double clicking on it and bring the blues back and with the help of the mask right there just dab on certain areas so you can make a selection and then dab to create some impact then you can just add some curves to boost you know the intensity of it you can clean the top i just cleaned the top and there was a building right there and probably remove some distractions and after that you can do some dodging and burning and then add the sky do not forget if the sky is getting pixelated you can also add some path blur to it to mimic the long exposure feel i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thanks so much for all your support thank you for watching i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating